Thank you, Megan, and uh, good morning, everyone. I'm very glad to be here, and uh, I'll be talking about browsing security, but more specifically, I'll be talking about browsing user against manifesto manners. And here are a few URLs, and while I'm talking, you can type them in and uh, browse the website and learn more about this initiative. So before talking about the initiative itself, uh, let me just uh, talk a little bit about the problems we're trying to solve. And of course you know very well what the problems are, but let me just briefly go through them just to set the context. <coughs> um, one of the problems is BGP, the Routing, the Global Routing, Protocol Use of the Internet is based on trust. So in the protocol itself, there is no way to verify the validity of the data we're getting from our peers and from our customers. And that means that you can lie, and this is maybe a malicious lie, that may be a misconfiguration lie, or something like this. And of course there are developments, the new extensions to BGP protocol are being developed in the IET, but it will take some time to get them mature and get them deployed. But it's not only the control plane that um, has the problems. One of the problem, known problems is source IP address spoofing, which is related to the data plane, where a host can spoof the source IP address where the tag is coming from, because this source IP address is not used in the global internet routing. And of course, there's another thing that binds the whole internet together, it's collaboration. It's uh, the internet you can see as collaborative activity. How do we find someone three, four blocks away from our network? How we effectively collaborate? How we mitigate some of the bad things that are happening in the internet? And that bad things happen. For instance, the BGP vulnerabilities that lead to things like previous hijack and then multiple, you know, um, cases where that caused outages, uh, uh, pretty global outages on the internet. There are also route leaks when traffic can be redirected and maybe subjected to, you know, eavesdropping um, or may result in denial of service as well. And uh, we all know that uh, source IP address spoofing is a root cause for reflection and amplification denial of service attacks. So there are tools. And of course, we're not sitting for this years uh, doing nothing. There are tools available, uh, such as uh, prefix has called filtering, uh, RPKI using routing registries. Uh, there are also uh, different methods how to mitigate the spoofing problem, like ingress and egress filtering, the URPF techniques. And of course, there are a lot of good examples of coordination when, for instance, DDoS attacks are mitigated, uh, there are multiple content databases that you can check if you need someone on the other side uh, of, of the ocean or on the other side of the network to take some actions. But there are challenges. There are challenges in the global internet that makes solving these problems so very difficult. One of them is that safety of your network in some other hands. The measures you deploy and develop to protect your network, protect your network only to a certain extent. Quite small extent in some cases. And part of how well your network is protected depends on other people's actions or inactions. So that's one of the challenges. Another challenge is that too many problems, too many things to solve, and too many cases. And sometimes, especially for a small ISP, it's very difficult to see what exactly, what the priorities are, and how to fix them. So, one year ago, a group of network operators came together to develop a platform that would try to address the problems that I just discussed. Um, they called this initiative Mutually Agreed Norms for Routing Security with a nice acronym MANUS. And it has two components, basically. One of them, it builds a community of security-minded operators. It promotes the culture of uh, collaborative responsibility. It's the thing that, you know, this, this, 
collective thing where your security depends on others. Another thing, it defines a package. It defines a package of four actions that, if implemented widely, could significantly improve routing security. It's a technology neutral, still technical thing, but it focuses on the outcomes rather than particular technology that is to be used to be deployed. So what are the good manners? Well, there are four things. It's filtering, web propagation of incorrect routing information. It's anti-spoofing, it's to prevent source IP address spoofing. It's coordination, facilitating coordination among the operators. And it's global validation, making data about your prefixes, about your network, available globally so people can validate. And it looks like motherhood and apple pie. You'd say, hey, we've heard about this many, many times, but there's some specifics, and I'll quickly walk you through those actions, because those actions were designed specifically to optimize for low cost and low risk. We know that some of those measures look like boiling the ocean on one hand, and on another hand, there are some cases where those actions are not applicable. So we we'll limited the scope of those actions to make them easily deployable. Let's have a look at that very quickly. So I mark the requirement that you filter announcements from your customers. And that's a very limited case because you're not filtering an announcement for your peers or from your, your, your upstreams. Anti-spoofing, that's a, again the case where we know that anti-spoofing in some of the, um, you know, that book, Architectures are very difficult to implement. But if you have a stop, single home stop customer, and if you have your own infrastructure and just putting measures. Same goes for coordination. It looks big, but what is requested in Manus is that network operators should maintain global accessible up to date contact information. Looks like a small thing, but when you're on the DDoS, it's very important to have a rough contact. And finally, global validation just means that you make this information available globally. So other people who want to do global validation can use this information to check routing announcements they are receiving from their peers, customers, or upstreams. It's important to understand that Manus is not only the document, it's a commitment. So it's not only a set of principles or actions or best current practice that people say, yeah, it looks good, uh, I think I support that. Actually, to become a member of MANS, you need to implement these actions. There's a commitment. So the company supports the principles and implements at least, well, one in principle, two actions uh, for the maturity of its infrastructure. And the company becomes the participant of MANS, happy to maintain and improve the document and to promote MANS objectives. So, while the initiative is almost one year old, we made some successes and we would like to have more success in the future. Uh, the public launch was on 6th of November 2014 when nine local operators joined together and launched this initiative. Since then, we've grown to 27 participants now. And I'm glad to say that there is one South African uh, or Pan African in fact, uh, operator recently joined Manus Walk Online Communications. Oh, Pan, I don't know if you're in the room, as if you're in. Great. Thank you. So, this is the site, this is the website, uh, the web page where it shows uh, participants. You can see the checkboxes, that's the actions that different participants implement. Um, and you, you certainly recognize some of the names there. We are expanding the group of participants, and at this stage we're building the brand. We are growing the reputation of this effort, so we're looking for network operators that take security seriously and have implemented these actions and much more, because MANIS sets the baseline. It's not the kind of aspiration. Aspirations are much higher. But who can join MANUS today and demonstrate that this is a good initiative and be an example, um, a leadership example for, for their region? 
I said manus is not only a document, it's a commitment, but it's also a community. What we are trying to do is build a community of uh, you know, security-minded network cooperators. For instance, by creating a trusted mailing list where certain issues can be discussed in a safe environment, trusted environment. We are planning possible other activities. One of them, for instance, what I said is manus itself is a technology neutral approach. But when you deploy Manus, you need to use certain technologies. It would be very really useful to have a separate document tailored specifically to Manus actions to demonstrate how you can implement those actions. I will start working on this uh, best kind of operational practices document, default document, to document those good practices. Well, in fact, right now we have 27 operators joining Manus. Each of them implemented those actions. So it would be good to collate this experience, distill some common practices, and publish this document. This is what I'm doing. So here's a question. But before I ask this question, let me um, make a, a quick poll. How many network operators are here in the room? Could you raise your hands? That's, that's a good portion. How many of you think you, you've implemented these actions you do the right thing and in principle uh, satisfy max criteria? Oh, it's not bad. I think that's that's almost 100% of the operators that I've, I've, I've seen in, in the room. That, that's great. Um, but um, I suspect some of you asking this question. So yes, we take security seriously. We've taken the security issues seriously for many years now and we're doing our cleaning our part of the street but why would i need to join manners i mean what the different will make i think that's a very important question and let me suggest three reasons and there might be more well because rising security is some of contributions what you've done is great but if you want to maximize return on your investments by doing those security measures, this return depends on how many other operators implement the same, right? When YouTube or Hijack, they, it didn't really matter how well they secure their own network. What mattered is how well PCCW secure their network. Because this is a way to demonstrate a new baseline. It's not the way. There might be other ways, and if you have suggestions, I'm, I really welcome, uh, would like to hear them. But this is a way to demonstrate this new baseline. When you look at best currencies document, it, you understand that this is a good practice and it was vetted by operational community. But what you really don't see is how many people are actually implementing this stuff. And this matters, right? Because we don't want to do something alone, we want to do something that is globally accepted as a community thing. And because if we build this community of manus foes, of this commitment, committed operators, it has this gravity that will attract others. So now we're talking to operators that have implemented the actions already, and they're pondering the question, why do I need to join? Why do I need to support this initiative? But later, I think when we build the gravity, when it has the gravity, we can attract others who haven't implemented these actions to make the step, to make their network more secure and contribute to the overall global routing security. So but the best way to, to, to see is to see what the participants what the participants say about um, So there are a few testimonials that we collected from the participants and while this is rolling um, I will say thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. And um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm eager to hear them and answer them. If you don't have questions now, um, please join uh, me and my colleagues at lunch. Uh, we'll have a table and we can discuss this, whatever questions you have, whatever uh, information you need about manners at lunch. Uh, thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, that's a Hi there. Um, I would go 
all one of the banks in South Africa, and we noticed quite an increase in the, the amount of Bitcoin debt coming through. Um, you know, we uh, hackers basically send information to your security guys saying that if you don't do X, Y, and Z and pay X amount of Bitcoin to this account, you're going to. Uh, the crypto lockers basically, I don't know if you guys have seen a similar trend globally, but that's something that's on the increase because I think since 2013, a lot of companies have been hit with these threats. I don't know if you're aware of it at all. Uh, well, I heard about that. I, I'm not aware of the general trend, so I cannot unfortunately say about the general trend. Okay, so it, obviously if you, if you stick with the, the security that you've outlined here, yeah, then clearly as a company you should be safe. Well, uh, there's some Bitcoin related threats that are also dependent on routing, right? There are some examples where Bitcoin will explode by using routing tricks. So that part will be protected if you implement uh, manners. Because manners are strictly focusing on routing the control plane and of the data plane, right? Not all the threats that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. So I'm now just a user in a domestic environment. It doesn't matter a great deal to me, one way or the other, except pricing. But it is. It would be interesting to know that if I selected an ISP, that I would feel a little bit happier knowing that they were using a good standard, a published standard, a known standard. So why don't you get something up that says um, stamped by manners <laughs> or something on that nature that people can use? Trademark type of thing, some of logo, something that they can advertise. So here's the logo, and manners participants can download this and put on their website. Uh, the thing is, that's why we're trying to get to, that's our destination. We're trying to be a brand that it will be sort of a quality mark that people won't say, because it's a long way till the customers can recognize and can value security, right? But ultimately, that's where we're planning to get. When people won't see this logger, or maybe we'll have a next generation logger of plans that will say, yes, that's a high quality ISP, ISP, I want to join that. Uh, there's another question. If you can pause the microphone, thank you. Hi, Andrew from Liquid Telecom. <coughs> I cringe when I'm about to ask this question, but I have to because I'm going to get asked it internally. Um, once we sign this document, um, are our marketing people going to be allowed to run fancy press releases about the fact that we um, signed this and shoved this on the website and make a big splash and dance about it? Um, I have to ask it because I'm going to get asked it by them. Of course, well, it's, it's a public initiative, and many of the uh, initial supporters who managed they made press releases and published them on their websites as well as on the manners side. So, yeah. I, 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 do you see this as a problem, or is it? Is, no, no, no. Is no. A, that's actually that's actually a really good thing because it makes it easier to sell internally. Right. Um, yeah, the company likes to do fancy press releases. One thing I, I would like to highlight that manners is not a marketing effort. So to, to mitigate, I understand what you were saying, but just just in general, because we're on this marketing thing, uh, that's why their actions and their real commitments, right? It's not like some of the documents where you just outline the principles, and it's very easy to say yes, we subscribe to those principles. We are manners supporters. Manners is slightly different. It requires this commitment. So. It has to pass the vetting of the technical stuff of the company. That's very important. And um, so just be aware that it's not hijacked by marketing. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that, that, yeah, no, that would definitely never happen because I did it by vetting it. And yeah, I can tell you I wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Um, ben Addison, you work on our communication. Um, um, this this question kind of comes from the fact that there's only 27 operators that have signed up, um, and I find that a surprisingly low number. Um, but for us, and I'm sure that this is true for a lot of other operators like us, 
we've been doing this exactly as you said in your presentation, we've been doing all of this stuff for years by default. It's you know, it's a fairly obvious, well known, good practice. Um, the only delay from us, which is why I haven't done this a year ago, is finding half an hour during a busy day to fill out the thing on the website, you know, I just never got around to it. Um, and so the number of 27 operators over a little more than a year surprises me. What is the reason that you're finding that that number isn't growing more rapidly? Because it seems like a fairly hitless activity to engage in with a whole bunch of benefits. Well, one other thing that at this stage it's one of the challenges is joining menace doesn't change anything in the landscape of our security. And people understand that, right? It's a long-term thing, it's a long-term uh, activity, uh, and you need to believe that if we grow high, that it might, it might have impact, right? You will say, yes, that's important. That's the new baseline that we need to implement, right? With 27 operators, it has very little impact. I have to be honest with you. That's why we're looking for those. So I put one of the questions saying, yes, we implement that. So what, 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 what is your ask, really? And the ask is, how, well, I had a discussion with some of the operators, and I say, you know, MANS will pay back only when I see that operators that haven't implemented those actions implement them to join MANS, right? But for that, you need to have a much bigger thing than just 27 operators. So there's a bit of you know chicken and egg or cat 22 problem, right? Before we grow, we can expect others will be motivated to do this stuff. And actually others being motivated to do extra things is the motivating factor to join, right? So th there is a bit of that. I also heard some of the things that people would say, hey, I implemented this, I do my stuff, I just don't want to be exposed, right? I don't want to show off. I, I, I'm, 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 you know, a professional. I think, yes, there is some truth in that as well. But I think we need to be able not, it's not a show off uh, uh, exercise, right? It's not a vanity fair. It's, it's about doing the right thing and convincing others that's the way to go. I don't know, it doesn't probably answer your question in one simple sentence, but it, it's the activity that doesn't, it's difficult to describe in one simple sentence. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, after what Ben has said there and my previous question, because they actually tie in together. You know, I, I also agree that signing this makes complete sense. And for us as liquid, we do all of the stuff already, and where we go, we're busy fixing it. The reason for the question about the marketing department was because convincing people at upper levels to sign these things in a large ISP often means giving something back to the organization so that they can see a reason when the technical people come to them and go, sign this. And if we want to get ISPs to sign this um, and do this, I think there has to be a marketing element to this as well inside the companies to get this to grow. And if we get it to a point where the ISPs can see a benefit in signing it, even if they've already done it years ago, we'll get more traction on it. And hence the questions about what can I say to the marketing departments, etc. Because that gives me a lot of leverage internally to get someone to agree to sign it. And it's something that we need to think about as technical people. How do we market initiatives like this inside the companies um, so that because, yes, it's good practice. Technical people, we know that. I mean, it's, it's common sense. Well, I hope it is, you know. Um, but that doesn't mean it makes sense to the people who actually have to let you sign these things. And that we've got to market internally. That's an excellent point. And the thing, I, um, well, that, that's one of the things that I hope this community of managed participants can also discuss and maybe suggest some, some useful things. Uh, another thing I would like to mention that in, at the Internet Society, we're working on, on messaging and outreach plan. 
uh, also targeting the kind of management level that in a company there is favorable conditions when technical staff comes and says, we're implementing this stuff, this is a good initiative, we need to sign up. People would understand why the company needs to sign up and lower this threshold explaining uh, why menace is important to your upper management. Yes. Well, once again, thank you very much. And uh, please, I'm here today and tomorrow. Um, please find me if you have any questions, would like to you know, have more discussion, and we can follow up by email or have a telephone call or have a Skype call and discuss this further. I really hope that this community can, can really join Madison and, and strengthen this activity.